If there's one thing you just can't do enough of, it's learning licks. So in this video, I'll show you five awesome and epic licks. Licks I use every day, so I feel like sharing and I think you better take advantage. There's something in it for everyone. If you're a beginner, just learn the first few licks and take it slow. And for the more experienced player, I'm sure there's something in it that will tickle your, your senses. In, in a good way, that is. All right, so here we go. Let's jump right in. <laughs> That's lick number one. It sounds so much character in just one little lick. And the lick is in the key of G and it says bluesy licks because we can use all these licks in a blues context. They're based around the G dominant seventh chord or the G major chord. You can use them in a G major chord as well. So we start off with the root note, the low G, played punchy and short staccato. And then we move up to the minor third note, which is fret 11 on the B string. It's a B flat. And the thing we do with this note is very cool. We bend it up slightly and then immediately return to the bass notes. And then at the end, you bring it back up. And so if it would be a graph, it's a little bend back to normal. And then at the end, you bend it up again. And then you stop the note, which is very important. It's also about the silences. And then you go back to the root note, G, but now two octaves uh, higher than the first note, for 12 on the G string. And then we do a little chromatic line walking down the strings from fret 12 on the D string to fret nine, but we slide into fret nine from fret eight. So we walk from the fifth of the G to the third of the G, chromatically going to the sharp four, four, to the major third, but we slide into the major third coming from the minor third, which works well in every blues sound. So, and then we play the high G again on fret 12 on the G string, and we play it together. So this is basically an inverted major third interval from G major. And then if you are feeling spicy, you can add the uh, G seventh sharp nine in there, which is 10 on A, nine on D, 10 on G, and 11 on the B string. So this chord fits the ambi ambiguity. So this chord fits the minor major sound of that blues very well because it's major and minor together. And there it is, one more time. Yes! So that was lick number one. Woo, so good. So here's lick number two. Woo, there isn't anything juicier than this. So we start off on the G major triad over here, which is seven on G, eight on B, and seven on the high E again. So why this works, this is just a G major chord. If we add our pinky to this on the fret eight on the B string, we're creating a G sus four. And that's basically the lick we're playing from G sus four to G. So eight and seven on E, eight on B, seven on G. So then we slide from fret 10 to fret 9 on the D string, which is the sus4 kind of thing again. And then the G string open. It's the same, but then one octave lower. And then you play the D string open, followed by a hammer on to fret 2. And then again, the G string. Back to the G string. And then we play that bluegrass or country thing from fret one to fret two on the A string. Followed by the low G again, fret three on the E string. So in total, and then we can end with a C over G, 
played like this. So your regular C chord, but then with the G as a root note. Ooh, that sound is warming my heart. <laughs> and then back to G major. It's just a nice resolution for this lick. So in total, slowly. I love this. All right, lick number three. Yeah, so tasty. Again in the key of G major, so we're following this pattern over here, basically the G major, the A shape. That's my reference point for this lick. It's always good to have these reference points when playing licks. So I'm borrowing my index finger on the first and second string on fret 10 and just hammering on on the uh, B string from 10 to 12. And then going back to 10. Playing both strings together. And then I'm sliding up from 12 to 14 on the G string. So going to that nine of the G. It's the A note, right? Give it a nice little vibrato. And then we slide up to fret 15 and immediately back down to 14. To the minor third. The blue note in this case, because it's based on G major. You hear that? So we are sliding and then immediately doing a pull off as well to fret 12 on the G string. And then uh, you're walk down from fret 14 and 12 on the D string back to 12 on the G string, the root note. So this is the first, basically the first part. as a sort of ending. I'm sliding from fret uh, 13 to 12 on the A string, which is the minor third to the nine. And then to the root notes, the G. And then we slide into the G seventh chord, very lovely, from fret nine uh, eight and nine on the A, D and G string and we slide it into the G seventh. And that's the end of this lick. So here's it slowly. Fast. All right. Oh. We're going fast, it's lovely. So here's lick number four again in the key of G major. <laughs> this is a fun little lick. So there's a few cool techniques in this, list, uh, in this lick. I'm just dying to tell you. So lick number four, we start off with doing a hammer on technique the same as previous lick. We bar fret three on the first and second string. Hammer on to fret five. Immediately after you hit the strings, right? But make a distinction between the first and second. A nice and clear distinction. So not. But. Ta -da, you, you really should hear two notes. And then back down again. To fret three on the B string, the D. And then we go to the four, the sus four or the 11. Fret five on the G string, which is in this case a C. And then another double stop, which is the name for two notes played together on a guitar like this. Fret two and three on the G and the B string, and we hammer on fret two on the G string, only that note to fret four on the G string basically from the 9 to the major 3rd, or the 9 to the 10. A to B. 
and then give uh, those two notes together a little vibrato. Oh, it just makes your heart weak. And then we slide from fret 3 down to fret 2. The blue note and then to the root note, fret 5 on the D string. So the 3 and the 2 are on the G string. Sweet. And then with our pinky, we play fret 5 on the D string, the G again. And then the ring finger plays fret 5 on the A string. And then we play fret 3, followed by fret 5 on the A string, followed by fret 2 on the D string. So it's a nice little jump between these notes. And you can slightly use the palm of your hand to mute the strings, palm muting. And then your index finger slide, and this is a tricky bit, we slide from 2 to 1, but we also change strings, so from D string to the A string. And then slide up to fret 2. Right, so there's a tricky hand movement, but very rewarding. Which slides up again to fret 2. Then we go to fret 5 on the A string. And now there's a little cool thing. While holding down fret 5 on the A string, you play fret 3 on the G string, which is the minor 3rd. But it needs to be a major 3rd because it's a dominant 7th chord. So we resolve up by bending only that note. Which is difficult. <laughs> and when you have that, you can play the root note with your index finger. So you just hit the strings on fret 3, and you should hear the low G note. So slowly the entire lick over here. A little faster. So one very good exercise, since this lick doesn't use any open strings, for G major you could. But the best thing is, you can now play this entire lick just everywhere on the neck. So you want to play it one octave higher, you can, and it still sounds so good. You see, it's super easy to just slide everything up. And that's the big use of not using open strings. So when I play fret 5 and 5 over here, you could do but Oh wait, I'm not getting a copyright strike for this, right? No, it's a blues lick. The next lick, the last one, number 5, and this is gonna be mind-blowing. So this is what's happening. You do a little hammer-on from fret 3 to 5 on the top two strings. And then you remove your index finger and you do a mini sweep from the second to the fourth string. So these three strings. And when you do that, you at the same time do a little hammer-on and pull-off thing with your, um, your picking hand, your fretting hand, I should say. So. And then five on G, pull off to three, five on D, pull off to three. So this is the entire thing slowly. But instead of picking everything, you just rake over the strings. Which is just a very good, cool, sloppy-ish sound. And then you repeat the same thing, one string up, so we can span the lick over more time. So, those two after each other. And then the last time you do it a little bit different. You walk back to the note where you start. So the last time you bar your index on three and three in the middle two strings, D and G. Hammer on, and then three on D, five and three on A. And then you 
walk up five and three on uh, A and D, and then you land on five on the D string. Oh, this is a tricky one to explain. And then the last little run I did is just five and three on D. And then very rapidly you do five, four and three on the A string. Fret six and three on the low E string. And then you land on the uh, the fret 5 on the D again. So slowly this entire leg goes like this. And quickly. And that's a wrap for these five awesome licks. So if you are learning one of these, just hit that like button because it means a lot to me that you're actually getting something from this video. Uh, all the tabs for all these licks are available at my Patreon page. So if you want to support me, you can download them over there and just read along, which is a little bit easier, I guess. But it's not a problem if you just figure it out with the videos because that's also a good learning tool. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day. See you next time. Cheers.